In this session, I'd like to speak very quickly about Paul's letter to Philemon. Now, remember we said that the, Paul is supposed to have written 14 letters, but most probably he only wrote seven of those. Six of the others were attributed to Paul, but he probably didn't write them. And then one, the letter to the Hebrews, we are absolutely certain he didn't write. Well, of those seven letters, only one of them is written to an individual, Philemon. It's only a short letter, probably the size of one piece of papyrus. Why did Paul write to Philemon? Paul is sending a slave, Onesimus, who belongs to Philemon, back to Philemon. And we're not exactly sure why Onesimus was with Paul. Did he run away from Philemon? Did Philemon send him on a mission to help Paul out? All we know is that Paul was in prison. Onesimus helped him out. And remember, in the early first century, when you were in prison, it meant under house arrest. You had to pay for your own food, your own lodging, and you also had to pay for your own guard. So Onesimus seems to be doing all of those arrangements. While he's with Paul, he converts, he becomes a Christian. So now Paul is sending him back to Philemon, and he says, when he arrives, treat him well. Now, theoretically, Philemon could have had him killed, especially if Onesimus has run away. He could have him branded, beaten up. Paul is saying, listen, Philemon, you owe me. You owe me big, probably because Paul converted Philemon. And so take it off of my account. Now, what exactly does that mean? Nowhere in the letter does Paul say that, he should, that Philemon should free Onesimus. Slavery was an accepted institution in the first century AD. We believe as many as 40% of the people who lived in the city of Rome were slaves. And it wasn't like the slavery of the 19th century in the United States, where, where people were lashed almost all the time, suffered terribly, died very young. But it was still slavery. What Paul does say to Philemon, now he's come back to you, not only as your slave and servant, but also as your brother. And there seems to be a little bit of a hint that it would be inappropriate for a Christian to have another Christian as a slave. That really raises some questions about social justice. Are there situations where we know that an institution is wrong, but at this moment, we can't do anything about it? And the best we can do is the best we can do. And we have to accept the fact that as long we, we have to fight for the right, but we might not see the fulfillment of, the, of what we're battling for within our lifetime. I think when we talk about the right to life, some of the battles we fight for justice for immigrants, justice for people who are very poor, we have to realize that we're fighting a losing battle at times. Doesn't mean we should stop fighting, but it means we should not have real, unrealistic expectations. Because if we have the expectations in our own hearts that are unrealistic, it'll just make us into angry people. What we have to do, do it as if it all depends upon us, remembering it all depends upon the Lord. And so should Onesimus have been freed? Yes, and Paul is probably hinting that it happened, but we don't know what happened to him. We don't have a feast for St. Onesimus. All we have is this one short letter where Paul says, most of all, treat him kindly. And may God bless us.